Alex Stokes is an independent journalist and Jewish anti-fascist from Albany, New York, who was sentenced to 20 years in prison for his role in a melee with Trump supporters on January 6, 2021. Alex is an American hero, an activist who gave selflessly for years confronting hate and organized fascism in the streets of the nation. He was arrested while acting as an independent journalist at the J-20 protests during the inauguration of Donald J. Trump. Showing a lot of support here. I believe we are still all getting arrested. I encountered Alex because while he was being arrested, I was present, working for a press freedom organization concerned about the arrests of independent journalists. A civic advocacy campaign got those charges dropped. He was injured during the 2017 Unite the Right protest in Charlottesville. Oh, I punched two Nazis in the face. A protest which turned fatal and saw one other anti-fascist activist killed by a Trump supporter. During the Black Lives Matter demonstrations of summer 2020, Stokes was a constant fixture on the streets of Albany, posting videos of civil rights protesters squaring off with the police. And then came the insurrection. This election was a fraud. We bleed freedom. This will be their destruction. Following the defeat of Donald Trump by Joe Biden in the 2020 election, Trump's supporters attempted to subvert democracy in a nationwide uprising targeting the national capital. Widely regarded as a coup attempt, their goal was to stop the certification of the vote by Speaker of the House Pelosi and Vice President Mike Pence. It is less widely known, but while supporters of Donald Trump visited their wrath on the nation's capital, the insurrection was not limited to D.C., and saw far-right demonstrations pop up at state houses across the country. One such demonstration occurred in Albany, New York, at the state capitol. The Albany insurrection saw far-right groups including QAnon and the Proud Boys rally in small numbers, but with the same extreme violence that occurred elsewhere. Over the course of a few minutes, a peaceful rally turned into a melee, with the far right unleashing a flurry of weapons and fists on anti-fascist activists who had turned out to oppose them. While there was no concerted opposition in DC, in Albany, a tiny handful of badly outnumbered defenders of democracy attempted to engage the insurrectionists, first with words and then with proportional and reasonable force. Surveillance video from two cameras at the State House shows in great detail what transpired. We see numerous assaults, all of which were initiated by the far-right attendees. We see Alex Stokes on the ground being beaten by a Proud Boy armed with assault clubs. We see a far-right supporter striking an elderly dog walker with a sharpened stick. We see two black activists thrown to the ground and mercilessly beaten by other far-right attendees and two Trump supporters team up to strike a woman who has become isolated. The weapon of choice for this beating are American flags, one of which has been altered with a pro-police insignia. The melee ends when one of the flag-wielding assailants tumbles to the ground, and Alex Stokes, seen here wearing purple, and others separate themselves from the far-right attackers. In another video taken just before violence breaks out, we see a black activist speaking to multiple Proud Boys while Alex Stokes sits nearby holding his signature coffee cup. A few minutes later, as the demonstration moves to the equestrian statue, a Proud Boy deposits his own coffee cup, freeing his hands with intent. At the same time, a Trump supporter sounds the shofar, an appropriated Jewish symbol also present at the US Capitol, a signal to attack. The fight begins as one of the Proud Boys, identified as Dominic Wierzbicki, uses a conducted energy weapon, a taser, to shock the same black activist. Stokes immediately intervenes and draws a knife, striking a Proud Boy, Doug Russo, who has jumped on another of the black anti-fascists, grappling them from behind. It is at this moment that a second assailant, James Warner, who is Dominic Wierzbicki's brother, engages directly with Stokes, separating him from the group and knocking him to the ground, fracturing his left wrist and pummeling him with assault gloves. Stokes, who is being beaten, uses his knife to stab Warner. Court documents state that James Warner, who is stabbed five times in the abdomen, eviscerating a bowel. Despite this, James Warner continues to strike Stokes until a second anti-fascist demonstrator intervenes 
and Stokes can turn his attention to another assailant. Doug Russo, a leader of the Uncle Sam's Proud Boy Club, has knocked a black activist to the ground by pulling their shirt over their head, something he described in court as a hockey move. Along with other far-right members, Doug is striking and kicking the individual and Stokes rushes Doug Russo and strikes him once with the knife, inflicting a minor injury. This ends the beating, and Doug Russo falls back at the same time as James Warner. Within seconds, Stokes comes running back again for a final intervention, as a Trump supporter strikes a woman repeatedly about the head with a flagpole. Tackling this assailant with full force and sending him sprawling, Stokes uses reasonable force to clear the area of threats to himself and his comrades, and immediately rallies with them to end the fight. Finally, after a minute and 15 seconds of watching the violence unfold, local and state police arrive and intervene. The first officer on scene was New York State Counterterrorism Investigation Unit employee Nikki Koval, seen here on the left side of the screen. A plainclothes officer, Koval was monitoring the demonstration from her hiding place behind a tree. Koval was present, in her own words, because the state had evidence that far-right groups were planning violence on January 6th. Despite having just witnessed multiple assaults, all perpetrated by the far right, Koval immediately begins pointing out left-wing counter-demonstrators who had just been attacked. In total, seven people were charged in connection with this incident, including two of the black activists who were assaulted. One Trump supporter was charged on the scene with second-degree harassment and two more were charged later. Tom Rostocki was charged for striking the elderly dog walker. Rostocki has since left the United States and moved to the Philippines, where he runs a vacation YouTube channel. Hi. I successfully escaped from New York. And uh, there's a place you want to come if you ever want to relax. It's an 8x pot bar. Drinks are cheap, and the girls are very accommodating. While Dominic Wersbicki was charged with a misdemeanor weapons violation and misdemeanor assault for his use of a taser. Dominic has since received a license from New York State to run Sticky Ickies, a cannabis business. Also charged is Colin Dermody, who was taken into custody on the scene and charged with second-degree harassment for striking a counter-demonstrator with a flagpole. James Warner has since moved out of New York State. Given a platform to do so, Warner decried Stokes in court as a maniacal radical who nearly killed him for simply expressing his constitutional rights under the First Amendment. In a written statement, Doug Russo provided police with detailed information about both far-right and anti-fascist demonstrators. Russo makes multiple false statements, including minimizing his own role in striking and beating other anti-fascists, but also alleging that anti-fascists had started the fight. Despite committing multiple unprovoked assaults on video, which they further bragged about in sworn testimony, Doug Russo and James Warner were never charged by police. Both would go on to testify against Stokes in court. Stokes was charged on the scene with assault with intent to cause serious injury with a weapon, assault to cause physical injury with a weapon, criminal possession of a weapon in the third degree, and second degree menacing. After being convicted in October, Stokes received 20 years. Sentencing occurred on November 17, 2022. In a statement published on social media and shared by friends and family on Thanksgiving, Alex says that he has applied for an appeal and retained a lawyer for that purpose. Facing transfer to a processing facility far away from Albany, Stokes bemoans the fact that he is facing 20 years for saving the lives of several peaceful protesters from a known violent mob of right-wing extremist white supremacists with weapons at the New York State Capitol building, a mob who were actively trying to overthrow the government that same day. Stokes goes on to say that the best support at this time is to spread the word about his case, to share his website, freealexstokes.com, and to advocate as much as possible on his behalf. He asks for people with connections in press and media specifically to spread the story of the January 6th protest in Albany. In future, there will be a letter writing and pressure campaign.